actor, comedian, or comedian actor, Jason Sudeikis joining us. Jason, welcome to the program. Hello. How are I you? actually put, I, I, I say them, they're stacked. They're not side by side. It's comedian, actor, actor, comedian. They're on top of each other. Oh, I like that. That way, that way nobody gets offended. I can uh, hear it in your voice. It seems like you're a little under the weather. Yeah, you know, aren't we all in this day and age? Well, you did stuff flying around. You did run into uh, my son at the premiere for race, and mm-hmm. he did say that you were praying for my health, and I do appreciate that. That was very nice of you. Thank you. And again, I cover all my gods, all my bingo cards. Uh, I got everybody looking out for you, above us, below us, in between us, all the gods. But when you're sick, like how many handlers do you have? Like how many people are tending to you? Just really, just Olivia. So I mean, that's enough. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's that's about it. I, I you know I think if you're a singer, or if you make people a ton of money, or if you're inclined to be, uh, you know, handled with kids' gloves, then then the more the merrier. I think the 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 gig allows for. Uh, you know, an entourage to become fairly deep. But if you have a, if you take umbrage with any of that, then uh, then you know, sometimes just just your gal or your partner or or your doctor's enough. No, so, so I'm just you know, I'm just in a plus one. I mean, I have a doctor <laughs> that 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 I know. I'm in the enviable position of occasionally being able to text when informa- when when something were to strike. So texting a doctor is is uh, in New York. I don't know how common that is. It feels. You know, modern, yes, but Midwestern in a way. Uh, the movie is Race, comes out today. And yeah. so, serious role here. Really serious role. Yeah, yeah. Very, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm in a movie that, you know, someone playing Hitler's in, and it's not a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> so it's, it's a, it's a, I, I would imagine, a little surprising to people. But, you know, we, we, have, we all have different sides to ourselves, don't we? But when you saw this role, is it something you go after or they consider you? They had considered me at this point, and and yeah, I read. I, you know, I never really know unless it's it, it explicit. To be honest, like like sometimes they'll say you you know take a look at the role of blank, or you've been offered the role of blank, and that shows up in an email with along with like a PDF of uh, you know in this modern day of the script. And we, uh, but this one I think was was as I was reading it, I knew it was mine to say no to. And but I, I yeah, I just really liked the character and then I, I then the story itself is remarkable i mean reading the script was like reading a you know a, a much better history book than than, than i had in, in you know civics class in, in grade school um because i spent the first five ten minutes when, when meeting with the director shortly after reading it just sort of being like oh, did this really happen did this really happen did he really do that uh because over the last 80 years we've sort of you know through the uh, sands of time a little bit lost you know uh the trail on on jesse jesse owens you play uh, his coach and mentor, Larry Snyder, and mm-hmm. what what is his role in uh, Jesse Owens' life, or at least in that time frame of 1936 Berlin? Yeah, well, I mean, even 1936 America or 1933 when it, when, it, when the film starts, you know, he was his coach at the Ohio State, and I mean, Larry was a little bit ahead of his time in the sense that both his innovations as a coach. Uh, you know, uh, he, he sort of thought outside the box. We show a couple examples of that, like asking his athletes to run to music or using, you know, bamboo bars to keep people's starts lower, especially Jesse's, because he had a tendency to stand right up. But, you know, truth be told, like, Jesse Owens was an incredible natural athlete. So, so you know, the thing that he afforded him, uh, that being Larry affording Jesse, was the opportunity to run at Ohio State, where black athletes weren't even allowed to play football. You know, he, he was... He was colorblind. Another another example of his sort of his him being on the right side of history of things. Uh, so so he just dealt with with Jesse as as not a, a black athlete, just an athlete, and I think that was unusual for the time. And then by the time they got to Berlin, you know, it wasn't it wasn't set in stone that that your coach goes with you. Uh, and and Larry was on a little bit of the political outs with with the uh, the fellows that were the head coaches of the Olympic team that year. So you know that's a that's a little bit of a, a struggle and, and you know issue that we deal with in the film, um, but yeah, I mean it, it really the interesting thing to me was always that they went from that coach athlete relationship, which we all sort of known and, and a lot of us had the opportunity to feel like in high school or college wherever we played something, but then it was like then he became a mentor once he earned Jesse's trust. But then there's a great there's a great you know turns in in the story where Jesse basically becomes a mentor 
for Larry at, 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 at some point where, you know, yes, he doesn't see him as a black athlete, merely as an athlete, but he only sees him as an athlete and not, not, as, a, not as a human being, uh, almost charged only with the, you know, <laughs> with the uh, responsibility to make him a better athlete. He didn't see him as a man. And once, once they sort of crossed that bridge, they forged a friendship that lasted to the end of both their lives. You know, it was, it was really a, a, a really neat story. And it was one that I clued into right away and then when speaking again with the director, Stephen, it's one that he wanted to tell and thought was an important part of it. So it's not like a, you know, I'm not a savior in this film. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty easy gig to uh, be the coach of Jesse Owens. You know, you're just trying to keep his head straight and being, you know, being a little bit older, being a former athlete himself. He, he's just wanting to prepare him for the things, you know, the intangibles maybe, the, you know, the things that, uh, you know, it reminds me of like the John Wooden philosophy of don't let things you can't control, can, you know, concern you, you know. And, uh, and Larry definitely... You know, gives him many examples of that throughout the, throughout the film. But but I, I think Jesse Owens. And I was joking with Stephon James, the fellow that plays him. I was like, he probably would have still done just as much stuff without <laughs> Larry. And I don't know if the same would have been the. You know, I don't know the other way around. He's uh, Jason Sudeikis. The movie is Race. It's in theaters everywhere starting today. You were at the slam dunk contest in uh, Toronto courtside. Yeah, I mean, the 14-year-old me still can't believe it, especially that dunk contest. That, I mean, was, that was crazy. It was, I mean, I, I would say the whole night of the skills night was incredible. I mean, every single contest, even even Draymond Green and Kevin Hart's, like, you know, three-point bit ended in a tie. But everything came down to the last second. Splash Brothers for the three-point, you know, you had, you had. And then that dunk contest, just like, it reminded me so much of the 88 dunk contest in the sense that there is controversy over who really won. You know, like everybody thought Neek won in Chicago, yeah. and yet, you know, Jordan walked away with it, uh, flew away with it, I should say. Well, had that been in Atlanta as opposed to Chicago, Dominique would have won that slam dunk contest. Exactly. I mean, what are you telling me? Are you telling me there's bias? Yes. Are you me there's political bias yes. in the dunk contest? Don't, yes. Don't. You're, you're yes. Shattering. Yes. <laughs> well, you're shattering <laughs> yes, my, there is. my shield of innocent youth. What are you doing? <laughs> Can, uh, were you ever able to dunk? I've dunked like four times in my life. I would not ever be able to say able, not not in comparison to friends of mine and people I played with. No, I, I was always the guy that, you know, threw it up by the, uh, you know, the square on the backboard and let them finish it. I was smart enough to do that. If there was a dunk contest of Saturday Night Live cast members, past yeah. and present, mm-hmm. at your who best. Would, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I would win because I might be one of the only ones that could touch the rim. <laughs> I mean, if we brought it down to nine feet, then then I think you're getting into, you know, Farrell's going to pull out all the stops. There's Ooh. nothing Kristen Wiig can't do. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I mean, hell, Leslie Jones may not even have to jump, depending on where we, where we put it. You know, it's like, uh, but I but I think if it came down to just sheer, uh, you know, I would. Uh, my whole goal when when doing a dunk contest in any height is just to, you know, the night before. Uh, go to the hoop, you know, almost like Hoosiers and just sort of stare at the rim and just get into a shouting match with the rim and then show up the next morning and just dunk dunk the hell out of it. Just yeah. just try to rip the rim off its hinges. Um, I like that. You know, I, I make it personal. I like that. Yep. Did you get into comedy to get into acting? Or did you just get into comedy just for that? I got into comedy or, like, acting, I think, because it was the only way to rationalize getting in as much trouble as I did in school. I think, the, you know, at some point, they, they you know, so many demerits, you know, so many, you know, uh, demerits. You have to, you have to change that. You have to spin that yarn in the gold, <laughs> you know, spin that hay in the gold in some way. But I think it was, I think when I look back in the rearview mirror of life, I feel like I was performing all the time because even in my basketball days, I was, I skewed a little fancy as a point guard, uh, you know, in, in your the tradition of Bob Cousy, Pete Maravich, or, or, or Magic Johnson. Um, so I was kind of, I always enjoyed the idea of showtime and, 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 and that kind of thing, much to the chagrin of several coaches and a lot of big men who, who maybe, you know, weren't ready for some of the passes, uh, early on, but like, um, and some that weren't even close, <laughs> you know, a lot of that's on my mind too. Um, but, but I think, yeah, to a degree, it, was, it seemed like comedy was the only, was the only thing uh, Jason, it felt, it Jason, felt weird. Jason, hold on for a second. Mm-hmm. Who's on the line there, Paulie? Uh, Will oh. Farrell, Dan. Will Farrell's on the line. Hey, oh, great. Hey, Will. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Is that Jason? Yeah. 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 Hey, Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> great to talk to you. <laughs> I mean, it's been a while. It. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dan, yeah. I was listening the other day. I'm sorry to interrupt. 
You're not interrupting. You're kidding me. You're, you're harmonizing with this conversation. What? Uh, um, wh- what were you guys just talking about? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. We were talking about. Some- now you're interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> We were well, talking you know, about it. Saturday- how precious this man's time is, and I mean, I'm talking to both men. I guess you know. No. At point. We, look, we, we're all busy, right? Uh, yeah. What? What's the? What's the issue, Will? We were talking about slam dunk contest at Saturday Night oh, Live. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Jason's got a great crossover dribble. I've seen it in effect. That, that's 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 true. On, never on the receiving end. No, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, Dan. I just want you were talking about doing shows in Ireland yesterday. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I, I just was calling in to say, if you if you guys do shows in Dublin, I, I'm I'll, I'll I'll fly myself out there to be a guest. This seems like a, this seems like a, an email. <laughs> okay, email or, or it call. probably could have been it probably could have been an email, probably could have been a yeah. text, but I just had to call. Uh, you know, I've always said, <laughs> right? Will Ferrell, a gentleman first. You know, right. he'd, he'd, he'd rather do it, you know, voice to voice, face to face. I'd rather do it the old fashioned way <laughs> than, you know, through the social media, through all this stuff. Um, so I'm old school that way. And um, anyway, I'll let you guys get back to what you were talking about. Well, I, Jason has to go. He's on a schedule there. Oh, you're on a schedule? Okay. Yeah, he, like he's promoting a movie. Yeah, not myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, uh, and I'm doing it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Will, could you stay on hold for a moment here? Let me. I just want to say goodbye to Jason and wish him good luck with the movie. Okay, uh, Jason, good good luck. When is it opening this weekend? <laughs> yeah, it opens today. Well, look out for Zoolander. <laughs> <laughs> if you're hearing footsteps, it's from we got to. Okay, uh, uh, Jason, uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, good luck with the movie. Absolutely, <laughs> and and Will, very nice to chat with you again. Gr- great to great to talk to you, buddy. Hey, and for real, Dan, if that Dublin stuff is going down, I wouldn't mind a piece of that either. I, you're in. You're I love in. their cereal. Yes. Love yeah. their cereal over there. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank, thank you, Jason. Uh, that's uh, Jason Sudeikis. The movie is Race. It's in uh, yeah. the- theaters. Uh, starts today. It looks great. Um, I would, I'd love to have you join us in Dublin if uh, that's something that you think you could fit into your schedule. So if I... <sighs> Because I'm I'm listening yesterday and I'm I'm hearing I'm I'm, I'm you know listening to you guys think out loud and uh, I love the idea of broadcasting from the Guinness factory yeah and uh, so I'm just throwing my hat in the ring if you guys do make that decision to go over there uh, I will uh, I will come on as a guest if you don't if you don't want me I'll just sit on the sideline but I'll I'll just be in the area how about you you co-host with me great uh, now you didn't just call in to promote Zoolander. Did you? No, I didn't at all. I literally, uh, I literally was was in, was watching yesterday. I thought I got to call in and let them know that I think that double an idea is a great idea. Okay, so this has nothing to do with Zoolander. Not one bit. Not one bit. Okay. But <laughs> after you go see today because this movie, pop on over to Zoolander. You know, if you want. Now, do I have to have seen the original Zoolander? Not one bit. Okay, good. But, but I'm not going to lie to you. It would help. Okay. It would help. <laughs> um, well, it's great to talk to you. Great to talk to you, Dan. Feel better. Um, and that was it. I was just literally calling about Ireland. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, buddy. So you're in. I'm in. I'm in. Okay. All right. All right. Th- Bye. Thanks, Will. It's, uh, it's Will Farrell. Nice little surprise. <laughs>